mannequin down there. <laughs> and it says, this lady. And it says, Rada got drunk on Rakia and lost her shoe. Please help Rada buy new shoes. <laughs> For more info, visit her little helpers inside. <laughs> His camera shot. <laughs> and now we're friends. You can come with me. You can come with me. <laughs> He's a cutie. Well, you are jump. Goodbye. I name you Ralphish. Ralphish. <laughs> Ralphish the third. Biggest cobbles we've had yet. They are big These cobs. be some big cobs. Big eh? cobs. Big cobs. Basically rocks. Basically right, yeah. Pretty much. What else can I say? Nothing. Huh. <laughs> Fancy that. Ah, paintings. <laughs> And our buildings, but more our paintings. You protecting your stick? This is your stick. Oh, itchy. I'll scratch for you. Oh, scratch. Oh, scratch. Uh, are you the tour guide? Can you teach us about this fountain? He's <laughs> the tour guide. You the tour guide? Come on then. What? What about this fountain? All I know is my daddy and my granddaddy and his granddaddy sat right by this fountain <laughs> and slept all the time. Come tell us. It was built when? Oh, wow. wow. Come on. Oh, he is coming. Come on then. <laughs> tell us about it. Oh, Come. maybe it's his day off. Oh no. Is he there? <laughs> it's very cool. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us your wisdom. Share your wise words. Oh yes. Oh. Oh. I love. I love. Yes, I take you forever. <laughs> I love you too. Very good tour guide. How much do I owe you? <laughs> How much do I owe you for the tour? Kisses. That's cute, you want to come for cuppets. But I do speak in love. I, I would take out of... Oh, he glorious. I would take out of... Very nice. Can you stay? Oh, yes. Okay. Stay? No? Okay. <laughs> so you still haven't told us about this fountain, you know? He has a wise old face. He does, doesn't he? That's why I thought he knew about the fountain. <laughs> Wait, if the other guy was called, what was his name down there? Uh, Ralph. Gregorus? Ralphieth? Ralphia? Ra 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 Ralphish. 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 If he was Ralphish, you can be Theodotheus. Why do they all have lip? I don't know. He's a Theodotheus. He seems like a Theodotheus. <laughs> uh, okay, so, like we said, right now we're in Plovdiv. We spent a couple of days already. And... This is deemed... Keyword, deemed. It is not 100% certain. But the internet seems to believe that Plovdiv 
is in fact the oldest continuously inhabited city in all of Europe. 8,000 years. Pretty cool, 8,000 years. So there were signs of evidence of human habitation in this region of Plovdiv all the way from 6,000 BCE. Which is 8,000 years ago. And 340 BCE, the Thracian city uh, was founded as the Thracian city of Eumolpius? Um, Eumolpius. And Thracians, you may ask, who are the Thracians? Thracians were an ancient Indo-European people who in inhabited the region known as Thrace, which roughly corresponds to modern-day Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, and parts of Romania. Here we've just been. Very cool. Thracians. Uh, parts of Romania. A d diverse group of tribes and kingdoms with its own distinct culture and traditions. So that's all I'll say about it. But they settled here by definitely 340 BCE. And after that, we have 72 CE. Roman Plovdiv, annexed by the Roman Empire and named Philipopolis. Philipopolis. Is that your name? Philipopolis. Philipopolis. So by the time the Romans came, it was Roman band named Philippopolis. Then, in the 4th century, Christian influence and early Christian communities were established. 5th and 6th centuries, Byzantine rule, part of the Byzantine Empire. Plovdiv became part of the Byzantine Empire. 14th century, the Ottoman conquest fell under, uh, Plovdiv fell under Ottoman rule. 19th century, Bulgarian revival, a center of Bulgarian national revival. By 1878, they had liberation, so Plovdiv liberated the Ottoman Empire during the Russo-Turkish War. And by the 20th century, periods of change under Bulgarian rule, part of the People's Republic of Bulgaria, during the communist era. Then, in the 1990s, post-communist era, transition to democracy and market economy. Uh, nine, uh, 2019, European capital of culture, Plovdiv, shares the title with Matera, Italy. 21st century modern Plovdiv thriving as a cultural and economic hub. How about it? Very cool. Cool stuff, huh? We were on the fortress wall. Hello. Hello. I had a little Tengu just like you. Cutie. So this this writing over here looks Greek to me. Shouldn't be able to make it out anymore. Yeah. Looks like Greek though, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah. You please let us know, is that Greek? Or is that old Bulgarian? Or is that Thracian? Could be could be Thracian. I'm gonna guess it's Greek. What do you say, Pilla? <laughs> They kind of look like little biscuits. They do look I like little biscuits. I kind of want to eat
Oh, you're good. Start again. <laughs> Adding to my pin collection, Soviet pin collection. So this one is, I'm not even sure what, but he said it's a symbol of Bulgaria. It's the right colors, yeah. it's the green and the red. And then there's a little lion, lion man, something like that, and they can see that. And then in Tbilisi, I didn't, I didn't get any Georgian pins. So I've got this new uh, Tbilisi pin. And then Bolgograd, Bolgograd, which is famous in Russia or in for the Soviet period for the sniper rifle. Ah. So that, remember, I don't know if we got it on camera, but our friend Andre from Kazakhstan, he told us this story about how like if you're smoking it like in ex-Soviet places, if you're smoking a cigarette and uh, what was it? You can only you, you can't light it three times because on the third the first time the sniper will line it up. Yes. On the second time you light it. The second person yeah, so like if three people are sitting around, only two people can be having a cigarette at once. Yeah. Because uh uh, yeah, the first guy lights a cigarette, so he, the sniper sees that first, the, the first light. Then the second guy lights a cigarette and he starts aiming it up. But if the third guy takes it, someone's going to get shot He's in the head. He's going to shoot you. So they just then smoke, the two of them just smoke their cigarette because it doesn't give the sniper enough time to actually <laughs> aim up his shot. So then that tradition carried on, ca carried on kind of into modern day. I think those rule. pins are also the cheapest I've bought yet. Cool. Like. Oh, maybe not as cheap as the ones that we found in Azerbaijan. Yeah. Yeah, the ones in Old Town Azerbaijan were definitely the cheapest. That was a good deal. I think they were one manat each, whereas these were uh, three each, but I haggled them down to two for two and one for one. <laughs> it's, it's very sweaty. It's a little it's sweaty. sweaty. Yeah. Love Div is hotter than I thought it would be. Yeah. Be a pit stop. And Bulgarian, the most famous Bulgarian. Kemenitsa. Keme. H is N. Backwards N is I. This guy is T S A. Kemenitsa. Tasty one. It can host up to 5,000 to 7,000 spectators. I think they could fit more in here. It's pretty beautiful, especially with the sun coming in like that. Look at the statues up on top of that last pillar on the far right. So, because we're on a pretty tight budget, we didn't realize that this was a ticketed venue, but you can basically see it anyway if you look through the bars here and it's just spectacular especially with the beautiful sunset And even to this day, they still use it for musical, theatrical performances, which is very cool. I love when ancient places like this are properly restored and then still of use in some way. So we're just going to try and get as many nice clips of it as we can from the outside.
I did see that there was tickets available when I went on the website, but I I assumed that that was for you to book a uh, with a tour guide. So that's my fault. I did see that there was ticket options, but I thought it was for you to book with a tour guide. I just assumed that this would be free because it's it should be free. Should be free, but that's that's, okay. that's the nature of the beast. We travel and we try to see as many things as we can without paying for it. And we're you can here. see some pretty good. Yeah, we're it still was here. Built by the Romans. Pretty cool. pretty cool. First century AD. It's pretty awesome. Actually, here I'm gonna go see if I can get a good picture around that way. Do you wanna give any commentary? No. <laughs> I don't. Okay. There's a little plaque here. Oh. There's a plaque here that might actually change some of the information we've already told you. The ancient theatre of Philopoli, Philo, Philippopol, is one of the best preserved ancient theatres in the world. It's located on the southern slope of the three hills in the saddle between Taksim and Dambaz Tepe. Discovered by the archaeologists from Plovdiv and reconstructed in the beginning of the 80s of the 20th century. The ancient theatre of Philipp, Philippopol is among the most significant findings from the Roman period, recently found and deciphered inscriptions on a monumental pedestal reveals the theatre has been constructed in the 90s of the 1st century AD when Philippopol was under, con under the rulership of Titus Flavius Cotus, an heir to the Thracian royal dynasty. The high priest of the Thracian prom province, representative of the Metropolitan Court of Justice and a person in charge for the construction sites, the open-air spectators area includes 28 concentric rows of marble seats surrounded with the stage orchestra which has the shape of a horseshoe and a diameter of 26 meters. Apart from the theater performances, the venue was used for gladiator, gladiatorial and hunting games as well as the seat for the General Assembly of the Roman province of Thrace. It was in use until the end of the 4th century and had a capacity of about 6,000 spectators. They are used to a lodge of the emperor and other officials in the second row of seats above the archway. Nowadays, the ancient theater is a symbolical for Plovdiv and adjusted to the city's modern cultural life. It's operating as a stage of opera, music, and drama. Some of the best annual events are International Folklore Festival and the Opera Festival, Opera Open, the Rock Festival, Sound of Ages, and many others. There you go, you can have a check it out. And, if it was a venue used for gladiatorial and hunting games, then... This is what I was excited about. Perhaps... <laughs> this is where they probably sent the, the lions and the gladiators and in. the elephants. And the elephants. <laughs> and see, what's crazy to think about now is how... I don't know if soft is the right term to use, but on that sign down there it says... No guns. Makes sense. No ice cream. No ice cream? No ice cream. Don't bring when a damn gun, don't bring it, a damn ice cream. Take it back thousands of years ago. They sent lions through here and now ice cream is a 
crime to bring <laughs> through these gates. Don't do it. Excuse me, sir. Sir. <laughs> I wanted to interview him about his great ancestors who came through here and chew, chew all the men's up. No, he doesn't want to talk about it. Understandable. Ancestral history is a little, a little painful sometimes. That's okay. He doesn't want to talk about it. Also, around Plovdiv, there's lots of houses that you can go in and explore that are original from the 1800s. This is one of them. I believe you have to pay to go in and check them out, but if that's something you're interested in, you can do that. There's also QR codes that you can scan if you'd like to learn more about the houses. We're a little a little pressed for time today, so we're not doing that today, but you can do that if you're interested in that. I mean, they're beautiful, why wouldn't you want to do that? And they hold a lot of interesting history. So you've also got lots of nice little boutique shops where you can get souvenirs, postcards, magnets, stuff like that. And then people selling their artwork. This cute little coat. Like main square, this part. But these are nice little side streets. Mosque. Cafes. This is the mosque here. Mosque. The church was back there. Get yourself a nice big Bulgarian flag if you like. Adam loves looking at this kind of stuff. He's on a pin collection rampage. Any good pins? No. no good pins. You got your good pins the other day. Rip off Roman coins though. Rip off Roman coins. <laughs> What century? Oh, fuck if I know, read the things. <laughs> so, this is really cool, but I don't have all the best knowledge about it that I should have. All I know is that this used to be where a big uh, Roman arena was built. And now they've kind of built this main city strip over the top, but half of it is still here. So you can sit in a cafe just there and you can ponder about the history of the things that happened here. And then over here they have a marble display of what it looked like. So I'm assuming that this end that they have still displayed here was probably up this end. And then it stretches all the way down. of what is now considered the main street there. But how cool is that? Let's see if we can get underneath. This, this type of history is just crazy to me. How cool is that? God, I wish I was multilingual. Some sort of history of the Olympics here, so we'll research that and put in a cat fact. Maybe the Olympics for card racing? I don't know. <laughs> 